really? My anxiety. Oh my God, y'all have no clue, man. I'm about to jump up in jubilation to this mother. Can I get an amen? Black God rules. Hey, yeah. MPC 3.0 is here. I've been playing with this for quite a while. I could not be on the internet because damn, every single damn one of my damn NPCs had this joint. But before we hype up anything, I just want you guys to know we're gonna walk through it and there's gonna be plenty of videos. And of course, if you are part of the masterclass, I will be updating everything as soon as possible because I gotta enjoy it as much as I can, for sure. And there will be a public beta soon. Woo, let me calm down. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Let's go. So with the proceedings of the evening, this is the new UI. You're looking at the new UI in itself. And as you can see, it's more presentable. Uh, the pre presentation is great. If I was to press and hold on this part of the screen, which is now called the track part, there's no more program editing or programs. It is called track editing. Uh, you can rename your tracks. Uh, you can do a couple of things. You can also rearrange the position of the track. Like if I wanted the sample to be at the very beginning, I put it at position one. And yeah, that makes a whole lot of things that I've had on my wish list for a Kai for a while. So the other thing too, if I go over here to this drum track, uh, you can see that there's nothing there. You can load up stuff right on the screen immediately. And I think that's something that a lot of people wanted to, it to be a little bit more straightforward and not to be so cryptic because I, I think a lot of people complained about the old main screen not making any sense to them. And now it makes total sense it should be. And, and don't fret, if you're an old school MPC head or you are using the two point whatever OS, the workflow hasn't changed, it's just been modified. So all of the things like track muting, recording, anything that you have learned can be reapplied to this, it's just been enhanced. So the other thing, if I hit the pads, you can see visually everything that is loaded on the screen. So everything is right there, as well as the arrangement right here, which is you know your piano roll, you click on that, I think you have to double tap, then you get brought into your grid view or piano roll, whatever term that you prefer, and everything is there. And if you press and hold shift, you see you have select all, you have pretty much everything that you need right in front of you. The other thing, let's go, just go ahead into the proceedings of the evening. Let's just go ahead and rock on out. Mm -hmm. So I've been cooking up on this for a while. I, I'm just saying. So I'll just go over here to, and you can press and hold the main button. And I do recommend this, and you can hit one of the correlating pads on the screen, and then you can go into sample. Uh, you, you heard that it stopped, and the main reason why it stopped is because of another feature that I wanna get into as well, which is introduced is the arranger. And the reason why I stopped is because I don't have it on loop. Uh, you can set loop points too. So if I just wanted to set the loop point right here, and it's all tied to your TC. So if you have your TC at 1 8th, 1 16th, 1 32, it will snap to that grid that way. So if I was to play it right now, it will loop from that point. So what I'm gonna do is stretch it on out. Uh, if you stretch on in, you can, you can reset it right over here. We already sh showed you the arrangement and all that stuff. Uh, you can go to your channel mixer, and now you see that we have a new channel mixer uh, that has uh, different tabs in front of you. So if you want to add effects, this is how the new effects look like. And if you're accustomed to the eyeball sign and adding your effects, you can have your effects too. Uh, it's just not an eyeball icon anymore. And you can set levels, you can add effects right here. You can add sins too as well. So if you click on the sin, you can uh, see that it correlates to the return. So you can see where you can return it at. Uh, you can add reverb and stuff like that. So if I was to go to, you know, that, you see the reverb right here, you can add it. And of course you can replace it. You know, you have sin too. Everything is kind of like default, like a DAW. So it's more of a DAW workflow. I like that. I mean, I know everybody likes that joint, right? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is minimize that. And I will go ahead and introduce the drums. And then we can just go on to that track. 
remember, you can hit the main button, press and hold the main button, and go into drums. You can touch the screen too, just in case you didn't know. And everything is available right in front of you. Again, presentation. Yeah, that is astonishing. Uh, you can also set it to pad view right over here. And from pad view, you can add your effects to your individual pads. So if you want to add effects to uh, individual drum or something like that, then you can do that as well. And don't worry, I will have the sample linked in the description box and you know, a lot of you will have that. So that is some of the cooler things about it. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and add the hi-hats in so you can see it. Let's go ahead and talk about this bass. So if I just want to simply add an effect, and this is important too, that you know that, that this exists, I'm going to go ahead back to the track here. And then I'm going to add, let's go into 808, boom. You can just add your effects. I'm going to go ahead and add a harmonic. Let's go ahead and add distortion. Select. And if you want to see the UI here, and add everything in, that's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust that because I don't want it to be that distorted. And you see, I, I mean, I've only been playing with this for a little while now. I just re started recording immediately as soon as I got this. I mean, I've, I've had it for a minute and that's the other thing. I'm on a plug-in track right now. So what I'm gonna do is add, or show you guys that you can go right to the UI right here and you don't have to go something like a menu and then hit like a, a pad or something like that. Or I mean on the, something like this, which is the XSC, it has all the buttons that you need. So I can really just hit the program edit button. But the main thing is if you're rocking with something like the MPC Live 2, uh, you're able to just navigate to the joint itself uh, immediately on the screen. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, that, that is a lifesaver. Uh, the other thing too, a big, big shout out to the person that subscribed is, you can see that you can transpose things up right on the screen here. You can hit this pad right over here and it's gonna bring up pad perform. You know, all the other form factors are there. The only thing is you have to learn how to long press and yeah, it's just a complete package in itself. Uh, you can hit this icon right over here and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you. You can start mixing immediately and you can see the mixer has changed for the better because I think that was uh, the most ridiculous thing in the world, how you would mix on here. You would just mix the program or at least that's how I would do it or that's how I taught it. So you can just mix right on the screen here. Reset it, it brings, it brings it out. You can add effects on here. Just like a DAW workflow, basically. I'm gonna go over here to Arranger, and then you can see the Arranger again. I know people are pressed like, man, I just got used to the MPC workflow and all that. Don't worry, I, I got you guys, I got you. We're gonna drop a lot of videos in this future, and the master classes will be updated for this. So don't, don't panic, I'm just displaying stuff. So I'm trying not to go too fast, because I know it can be a little, I know I can be a little too much, so if you go over here to this edit right over here, you can uh, do double length. So let's go ahead and double the length, boom. And let's go ahead and hit this part of the screen and you can see that it doubled the length of what I had. And now it is 16 bars. If I wanted to go and do 64 or in this, it'd be 32 and 64, then I can play with some of the arrangement side of it too. And if I needed to reset it again, I can set up the loop point again. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset it. Let's go ahead and set it back down to a loop here. Uh, and as simple as that, you can set up loops. Try not to go too fast for you guys. Uh, you know, just cause I'm well acquainted don't mean that you are, right? So I have this loop point here. And if I wanted to mute stuff, you know, just the traditional track mutes are there. Here. So let's go ahead, menu, range. 
So one of the biggest things that I want to show you is this right here. So I'm going to press and hold on this track and you can see where you can delete tracks. You can copy tracks. You can copy events. You can reset a channel strip. You can bounce the sample down. Uh, you can do all of that and it will tie into your position of this part right here, which is the looper. I don't know the correct name for it. I do apologize, but everything that you would do, let's say theoretically, I, I don't know if I wanted to do some drums over here and I wanted to bounce it down to an audio track, I can bounce it down to an audio track. I can bounce it down to a sample. I'm going to bounce it down to an audio track, a selected clip, and then I can just bounce it down, make sure that the audio tail is at zero, boom, and it's going to export it. Now that it is exported, you can see I have the bounced drums right over here on the track. Now that you see that, when you select the track, you can also do this right here, which will allow you to see every part. What I'm gonna do is just add a string section just real quick. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, the workflow is just like a DAW, but with the MPC feel. And that means that you can also record audio directly on the timeline. And yes, it's very possible because it is one feature that I'm going to talk about right now. So let's go ahead and hit menu. We'll go to prefaces. And now you can see what's in front of us, which is this streaming. We've made it gang. We've made it. So in order to utilize this streaming, uh, you will basically just go into your menu on your MPC. And then you go into project and then you will press and hold what you want to. And you can see you can delete the sample, but we're going to set this to streaming from disk. So that way, everything that you use in the future will be right there and it will load immediately. So you can set whatever sample that you want to load in the stream. So that makes it easier for bigger projects to load and not into the virtual memory. That's right, gang. We can actually record vocals inside your MPCs. You can actually just treat it just like a straight up DAW and record and complete a whole entire song. Mm, mm, mm. Now I have my number one boot thing in front of me, which is the MPC Live 2. Uh, you can set your bars right here. You can clearly see it says four, two bars and you can set it to a four bar or whatnot. You can transpose. All this stuff is still here. I don't know what I haven't covered, but what I'm going to do is chop up a sample. So. I can do something simple as this. I can just go and load samples, load it up a sample and you can see it's in sample edit mode and none of this has changed. Like all the core functions haven't changed because they were already good. Uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just chop this up real quick, BPM chop. I like that. All right, let's get it. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is do a little bit of mixing. So again, you have this icon right here, which correlates to the tracks. And this is what I'm gonna do, is lower the sample. So let's lower the sample down. Send away. I think that's a little too much. We'll go back in the main. We hit this icon over here, which used to be the eyeball icon. We're going to add an effect. We're going to go ahead and select track number three. Matter of fact, let's go main. Let's get into the habit of doing that stuff now. And now we're on the sample. And we'll just go ahead and just add a filter so we can clear some of the extra harmonics. We can hit this sign right here. Let's go ahead and look at that. 
so that you see where it's at. And now you can mess with the filters the same way. Let's go ahead and adjust it. Mm -hmm. Like that, like that. Then we just go back in the main. If we need to mix some stuff, if it's out of the way, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back in the track there. That's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. If we can, if we wanted to add more effects or we want to add effects, we can add effects here. All right, here's another cool tip here. Let's go ahead and just add like a reverb or something like that. Let's add a reverb just for the sake of it. All right, that's from the track here. Let's hit main. And then now what we're gonna do is this, because what I didn't talk about is that you can rearrange effects. So. You can rearrange your effects, you can move them up now. So I had to revert first. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play with the mix. So it's just not in the, all the way in there. You know what I'm saying? It goes without saying there's a true benefiter of this. And that would be like the key 37 or the key 61. So this is the key 37. And as you can see, it looks quite spectacular. Uh, one thing I have not talked about is if you don't want to mess with the default drum track or whatever, you can switch things out by pressing and holding on this icon over here. And then you can see, you can set it up for a key group. You can set it up for, pardon. You can set it up for a plugin. You can set it up for CB and gate. You can set it up pretty simply. It's not long press either, by the way, it's just tap. But yeah, you can set it up. What I'll do is I'll hit a drum track because we're gonna get a drum track and I'll make something real quick. All right, we're gonna record in the arranger here. Let's go ahead and get it. Let's see if we can get it all in one take. Get it. All right, let's go to the BDD. without saying the workflow will be ridiculous now and now the sky's the limit finally 
And it's not like I've had an issue with making beats on the NPC, but it'll open up the door for more people that are curious about the NPC workflow. Now that it's more like FL Studio or Ableton Live. Man, I'm still excited. I gotta calm down. I gotta calm down. So the first thing that I would like to say is, uh, Akai, I don't, I don't say this often, but I really do appreciate the thought process and the fact that y'all are taking a lot of criticism uh, with a grain of salt just to bring us the best product as humanly possible, uh, the new potential of being able to record and side of the MPC, and I mean actually record songs because of disc streaming, uh, the arrangers, which is something that I, I ain't gonna hold you. I did not want that shit because I thought it would mean the MPC would be more like the Akai Force, and I always thought the Akai Force needs to be the Akai Force. And I know Force users are a bit upset. Some of y'all could go over and just migrate over here. I don't know. Uh, I know a lot of you guys will probably, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what the future holds there. I know nothing about it. Um, uh, the other key features, especially some of the momentary sampling um, when it comes down to shopping, that is incredible. Uh, just being able to rearrange tracks, that was one of the things that used to piss me off and of course the mixing uh, the change of the program no more program editing it's called track editing now it's, it's called there's no more programs tracks i think that will change the way that people look at it because i think one of the biggest issues for beginners is dealing with programs separate from tracks even for me i always thought it was a pain in the ass but they oh uh, wow phenomenal job there last but not least i think the most controversial thing that many people in the comment section will say and i'm just so sick and tired of hearing certain people talk in my comment section i'm just gonna keep it 100 uh, would be the workflow changing dude I'm, I'm sorry to tell you man the workflow has to change so that more people can be introduced to the workflow that are used to the daw workflow not because of and it's not changed to the point to where it's hard to figure out. Matter of fact, everything that you could do on all the MPCs 2.0 and below is possible with the new 3.0 workflow. That's the best thing about it. When I asked the Kai personally, I was like, oh man, are we going to be able to do track mutes and, and stuff like that the same way that we've been doing for years? They said yes. And then I was like, huh? And then, of course, there's a downgrade button if you don't like the 3.0, but I'm pretty sure you're not going to downgrade because that was the main thing I was concerned about. I kept a copy of 2.15 on my desktop. I can safely remove it from my desktop because I'm not going back. I'm not going back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that arcanic workflow uh, was not working for me in certain aspects to where I want to be comfortable on my piece of hardware. So I will continue to do master classes. I have beginners courses coming up, man. We're going to be cooking in this bitch again. Finally, to the right of me, I have more content for that ass. Make sure that you subscribe because I will be dropping more content for that ass. Uh, tell me how you feel about it. I know a lot of you guys are going to have some constructive criticism still. People will move the goalposts per usual. Um, I expect it. Akai expects it. And, and that's just the natural order of things. God bless.